Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ethan Abel. I'm from the University of Michigan, and uh, thank you for attending my webinar entitled HNF1A in uh, Human Pancreatic Cancer Stem Cells. So to begin with, I'll talk a little bit about pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma, or pancreatic cancer, that I'm going to be discussing. This is uh, not the most common cancer. It's actually the 13th or 11th uh, most common cancer in the United States, uh, which is pretty much where the good news ends for this cancer because it's actually fast on its on course to uh, hit the number two cause of cancer deaths in the United States uh, by the year 2020. So coming up very soon. There's a lot of reasons for this. So uh, we believe that a large factor is of course, late detection for this disease. This is something that's quite famous, um, but it, it, this is compounded by early and aggressive metastasis, as well as a lack of effective therapeutics for treating the disease uh, once we actually do detect it. And a common factor behind both the uh, aggressive metastasis of the disease, disease, as well as a lack of effective therapeutics, is a, a cellular compartment that we refer to as pancreatic cancer stem cells. So pancreatic cancer stem cells, these are uh, a subtype of tumor cells. There are multiple types of actual tumor cells within the, the pancreas, as well, or pancreatic cancer, as well as uh, non-cancer cells. But these, this subtype of cancer cell is highly plastic. We believe this to be an epigenetic process or transcriptional process um, that allows them to basically be solely capable of forming new tumors as well as maintaining pre-existing tumors. And through this mechanism, we believe this is be, uh, contributes to their ability to promote metastasis as well as resist chemo chemotherapeutics and allow the regrowth of tumors after treatment. As such, pancreatic cancer stem cells are a very desirable therapeutic target in the disease. But as of right now, we don't really understand fully what makes them different from the non-cancer stem cell compartment and what these uh, vulnerabilities might actually be. So a major focus of my research is uh, basically discovering new drivers that actually promote the cancer stem cell state with the hope that these might be something that could be exploited and uh, targeted to get rid of the subtype of cells. So just a little bit of characterization you know, of cancer stem cells that I'll use later in my talk is that these cells are capable of forming tumors. So in this case, uh, using data from the Simeone lab, which was a part of when I did this work, um, we found that uh, cancer stem cells are marked by the expression of three surface markers, CD44, CD24, and ESA or EPCAM. And that cells expressing these markers are able to form tumors, whereas cells lacking these markers are not. Additionally, in vitro, we find that these cells can actually form what are called tumor spheres when grown under non-adherent conditions in serum-free uh, media. And both of these uh, techniques will be used heavily throughout my talk. So keep in mind, these are sort of in vitro and in vivo met metrics for uh, the activity of cancer stem cells. So to identify drivers of the pancreatic cancer stem cell state, I started off with patient-derived tumors and separated these tumors into cellular compartments of cancer stem cells, so those uh, cells expressing EPCAM, CD44, and CD24, as well as cells lacking those, which we refer to as bulk tumor cells, and then performing microarray analysis of these different compartments to look for genes that were upregulated in pancreatic cancer stem cells versus the bulk cells with the idea that these might actually contain drivers for the state. And then through functional validation, figure out which of these genes actually are contributing to the cancer stem cell state. What we found, interestingly enough, was that using two different primary isolates pancreatic cancer was that these pancreatic cancer stem cells had uh, 50 genes that were conserved between patient isolates that were upregulated in the cancer stem cells versus the non-cancer stem cells. Uh, when we looked closer at these genes, we found that a large subset of these genes were actually predicted targets of a transcription factor known as HNF1A or HNF1-alpha, and that HNF1A itself was actually one of these genes upregulated in the pancreatic cancer stem cells versus the bulk tumor cells, which suggested to me that these might this might actually be uh, essentially the head of the snake driving the pancreatic cancer stem cell state. To look into what actually HNF1A is, this is a transcription factor that is found throughout the uh, uh, gastrointestinal tract in the liver. Its name is hepatocyte nuclear factor 1 alpha. It's also expressed in the pancreas and is important for pancreatic homeostasis. Uh, additionally, there are a number of silent, uh, or I should say, uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms in HNF1A that are known risk factors for the development of pancreatic cancer, although this is through unknown uh, mechanisms at this point. 
Additionally, in the literature, it's been suggested that the HNF1A may be a tum tumor suppressor in some contexts, in the case of the liver, possibly even the pancreas, um, but also possibly even an oncogene in the context of prostate cancer. So a lot was not really known at the time when I started studying the function of HNF1A. So to learn more about it, I looked at the comparisons of pancreatic cancer tissue versus normal pancreatic tissue and found that HNF1A levels were elevated in the neoplastic ducts of pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma versus normal ducts of the pancreas. Additionally, looking across a panel of our primary pancreatic cancer cell lines compared to immortalized uh, ductal cells, HPNE and HPDE, we found that HNF1A levels tended to be higher in pancreatic cancer versus these normal cell equivalents. To determine what HNF1A actually was doing in pancreatic cancer, I went ahead and knocked down HNF1A with different siRNA targeting uh, the gene and found immediately that HNF1A knockdown resulted in a profound effect on proliferation of these cells with a marked reduction when HNF1A was lost. Additionally, loss of HNF1A resulted in an induction of apoptosis in multiple cell lines, suggesting that HNF1A was important for maintaining both the growth and survival of pancreatic cancer cells. To determine whether or not pancreatic cancer stem cells were actually being affected by the loss of HNF1A, I looked at the expression of these different surface markers I previously mentioned, uh, basically demarcate uh, pancreatic cancer stem cells, and found that there was a pronounced downregulation of these markers, in particular CD24, which was downregulated in multiple cell lines when HNF1A was depleted with different siRNA. Additionally, looking at the ability for these cells to form tumor spheres, I found that loss of HNF1A markedly reduced both the size and the number of pancreatic cancer spheres, uh, indicating a loss of in vitro HNF or in vitro stem cell function. To test what is actually going on in vivo, I went ahead and knocked down these uh, cells with shRNAs for a stable knockdown of HNF1A and found that knockdown of HNF1A in vivo markedly reduced the ability for these cells to form tumors, and when the tumors were formed, that they were substantially smaller than the control knockdown cells. Uh, this was also ob observed when we actually implanted the cells into the pancreas of mice, so an orthotopic injection, showing that the microenvironment was not a factor in this loss of uh, tumor growth, and that loss of HNF1A was in fact reducing the ability for these cells to form tumors and to continue to grow. Additionally, if we took tumors out of mice that uh, either had been knocked out for HNF1A or a control hairpin, uh, we found that the number of cancer stem cells from tumors of HNF1A knocked down mice uh, were actually markedly reduced, suggesting that the loss of tumorigenicity that we were seeing was a result of a loss of the cancer stem cell compartment. To test whether or not we could actually push the cancer stem cell state in the opposite direction, we went ahead and uh, overexpressed HNF1A, and in this case, in an inducible manner, in pancreatic cancer stem cell or pancreatic cancer uh, cell lines, and found that uh, consistent with our knockdown data, that overexpression of HNF1A promoted a marked increase in the expression of CD24 as well as other cancer stem cell markers, and additionally promoted the formation of tumor spheres. So we ended up with larger as well as more numerous uh, tumor spheres uh, quantitated here. If we go ahead and look at non-cancerous uh, cancer cells, in this case, HBDE or HBNE, which is an immortalized pancreatic cell line, uh, lacking both the KRAS mutation, which is present in over 90% of pancreatic cancer, as well as lacking HNF1A, we found that if we overexpress either KRAS or HNF1A alone or in combination, that both of these uh, genes functioned as oncogenes, promoting the ability for cells to form uh, colonies at low density. Additionally, using a separate uh, immortalized cell line, we found that these genes were able to cooperate in the formation of uh, colonies in soft agar, indicating a uh, ability to bypass um, anchorage uh, or, or actually promote anchorage independent growth, suggesting that HNF1A does in fact function as a novel oncogene in the context of pancreatic cells, and in particular when combined with KRAS, the universal mutation in pancreatic cancer. So to determine how HNF1A is actually promoting um, stemness in these cells, I went about looking at known regulators of, of stem cell state, including many of the Yamanaka factors known to impart stemness to uh, normal cells such as fibroblasts and keratinocytes, and found that of these genes, OCT4 was downregulated when HNF1A was knocked down, shown here at the RNA level, as well as at the protein level when we knocked down HNF1A. And importantly, it's worth noting that the form of OCT4 expressed in these cells is uh, OCT4A, which is the subtype of OCT4 
capable of imparting stemness to somatic cells. So indicating that this is actually important for the stemness of these cells. Um, additionally, when we overexpress HNF1A in these cells, both in cancer cells as well as normal uh, pancreatic cells, we found that overexpression of HNF1A caused an upregulation of the RNA levels of OCT4. And when we actually look at the promoter regions of OCT4, we found that interestingly, the non-canonical or the canonical promoter of OCT4 was not actually induced by the expression of HNF1A, but instead a non-canonical recently described upstream promoter region, which is essentially a retrotranspose on LTR region that was highly responsive to the presence of HNF1A, suggesting that HNF1A is directly regulating OCT4 through a non-canonical promoter, 14 kilobases upstream of the canonical promoter to determine whether or not OCT4 was actually directly contributing to the stemness of these cells. We knocked down HNF1A uh, alongside OCT4 and found that similar to HNF1A knockdown, loss of OCT4 resulted in a loss of tumor sphere formation. And importantly, when we re-expressed OCT4 in HNF1A knockdown cells, we found that the re-expression of OCT4 was able to rescue sphere formation, indicating that uh, OCT4 is epigenetically located downstream of HNF1A and upstream of stemness in pancreatic cancer stem cells. Now beyond OCT4, we wanted to know what HNF1A might be regulating in pancreatic cancer cells. So we went ahead performing RNA-seq as well as CHIP-seq and identified a number of targets that were both upregulated and downregulated by HNF1A expression across uh, multiple pancreatic cancer cell lines. And of these genes, we found an interesting trend where genes that were upregulated by HNF1A actually were associated with poor survival in patients with pancreatic cancer uh, analyzed by the TCGA, suggesting that beyond OCT4 and cancer stem cells, HNF1A might be regulating a larger malignancy profile or, or program in pancreatic cancer cells. So to summarize these uh, findings that we published this summer in eLife, uh, we did find that HNF1A was not only upregulated in pancreatic cancer stem cells, but actually was important for the function of these cells, both in vitro and in vivo. And this is probably through the positive regulation and direct regulation of OCT4, which links HNF1A directly to stemness. Beyond this, we know that HNF1A now actually is associated with genes that it upregulates, and that these genes are uh, basically harbingers of bad news for people with pancreatic cancer. They're associated with poor patient survival, suggesting that HNF1A may regulate a larger malignancy profile uh, in pancreatic cancer. So with that, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about my future directions. I'm interested in understanding other facets of how HNF1A controls uh, pancreatic cancer stem cell biology, including things like drug resistance and metastasis. These are other hallmarks of pancreatic cancer, um, as well as understanding ways that we can actually abrogate HNF1A function and expression in cells. And beyond that, look at some of those genes that were associated with poor survival in patients with pancreatic cancer and find out whether those genes are biomarkers or actually novel targets that could be useful in treating the disease. Beyond HNF1A, I'm interested in other transcription factor networks and understanding how these different networks contribute to pancreatic cancer and the plasticity of this disease. So with that, I'd like to acknowledge the labs that I've worked with, the uh, Crawford Lab and Simeone Lab that uh, basically funded my research, as well as the many uh, members of these labs, including people with asterisks next to them who contributed to this paper and are authors on it, as well as my funding from the American Cancer Society uh, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network and AACR. Uh, I basically appreciate that and the opportunity to speak to you all today. So I would like to thank the audience. And if you have any questions or comments, please do contact me. My email is listed here and I look forward to hearing from you. And with that, have a great uh, World Cancer Day and enjoy the rest of these seminars.